Four kids. 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 Hi there, and welcome back to Journaling Through Life Home Edition. If you are a parent of children that are maybe below 10 years of age, this video is definitely for you. We can help our children express their thoughts and their feelings and their fears in this coronavirus and the self-isolation through storytelling. We've seen a lot that people are asking questions that can create uncertainty, it can create voids for the children, adding to this level of anxiety that they already have. Perhaps your child has it all under control or seemingly under control and then something snaps and it's just a whole different situation than it was just a few minutes ago. Maybe you have a child that is not as expressive and they do not openly share their feelings with you. Remember that it's not you, it's their journey and they're going to deal with it in the way that works for them. Your responsibility as a parent is to guide them and to help them. Not to be pushy, but to know when to expand on their ways of thinking. If you are really in tune with your child, you will know that when they need a little bit of extra push just to get through this hump without seeming judgmental or punitive or authoritarian. Now, writing and storytelling is an incredibly powerful way for us to connect to our children without them feeling judged, and it creates a safe space for them to let their emotions out. So this video is created for children, like I said, between the ages of four and 10. Now, by creating a distance, between themselves and a character in the story, it creates that space for them to really explore. Now we can ask the children after they have completed the story if they would like to share it with us or not, or if they would just like to share little bits of it. It is important to encourage your child to start having open conversations and this makes it easier if it's the character speaking and not them personally. You can also ask them if they have a different adult that they wish to share this with. Ask the Nana if she wants to do a FaceTime call so that you can tell her this story. Now, don't feel offended if your kid does not choose you. Again, it's their story. And it depends on where the child is in terms of their milestones as well. There is a specific time frame where the parents are placed on, they're sort of on pedestals. That was the word. <laughs> they're placed on pedestals. So the child doesn't want to feel like they are somehow less than or that they're saying something wrong so that they would be seen as lesser in the eyes of the parent. So it's important to know what stage of development your child is in. Now, the child also doesn't need to complete this story template in one sitting. Similar to children in grief or even adults, but especially in children, it's a lot of emotion for a little person. There's a lot of feelings for a little body and a little mind that just lost all of their friends. They can't go back to school. They lost their freedom, sports activities, all these things can definitely compound and it could be too much so if we are trying to push they're just gonna not give you what you need or what is helpful for them they're just gonna withdraw or maybe if it's they're just gonna fight about it or get frustrated and then it proves the whole experience moot the other part of creating a story journal for a child is for them to get into a healthy habit of writing about their feelings, a life skill that they not only need now, but that they can take with them for the rest of their lives. Imagine being 18 or 20, if you are 10 now, and reading back the story about how it was for this character to be in their house all the time. 
it gives them that connection to the outside world where everybody is a part of this moment and the other thing to remember is that they might not feel to do it today or tomorrow children find safety in routines this is something from when they are very little not schedule that's something else routine routine we wake up We go to the washroom, we put on our clothes, we come downstairs for breakfast. If you had a rough night, it'll be 8 o'clock in the morning. If it's a regular day, it would be 7. That is the difference between schedule and routine. So try and create a routine for writing every day within your routine that you already have. I'm sure the teachers would like it too. It's a bit of extra writing for them. Now... The other part part is that if you find that your child is dwelling in the anxiety or they feel like it is a very draining activity or the anxiety gets overwhelmed, try not to feed into that energy. Bring it down. Bring it down. Say, you know what? It sounds like this character needs a break. Is there anything that this character can do? Maybe it needs to take a a water break or it needs to breathe. Do you want to look outside and see if the trees have leaves yet? Do you want to see if there's a bird? Just make that clear cut as a distraction if you find that your kid is dealing with emotions that are too heavy. And then slowly bring it back. Say, okay, does the character feel better? Maybe we should write what made him feel better. The aim in all of this for everybody is to have ebbs and flow that are not as intense as they were before. So when we are dealing with intense emotions, for example, putting it on a scale of 100. So if when this virus first started, you were at 100% anxiety. Maybe next week you will feel the same anxiety, but the intensity would be 80%. Or 60%. And this is how journaling can really, really help. It brings you to the same spot for a shorter period of time with less intensity. Journaling is an excellent way for everybody, but especially for little kids in this time. Through the storytelling method. Because as grown-ups, I will just give you a prompt and you can write how you feel. For kids, they're still growing. They're still in, even some children are in that magical space still. And we need to be cognizant and respectful of that. And then we can use that to really give them life skills and strength for the rest of their lives. Now, dwelling on negative experiences can also be draining for the parents so make sure that when you start this activity you as a parent come in with it with your glass full make sure that you have done your self-care routines that you are in a good headspace because the energy that you're projecting will transfer to the kid and journaling is an excellent bridge between openly expressing how we feel and drawing on that inward solutions. I welcome your comments. Tell us what has worked for you. Tell us how you've used this template. I'll put the links in the description below on how you can, for free, access this journal for your children. And it's always an open invitation. If you would like to submit the entries anonymously to us, we always use it for research purposes and to create more journals and also to have a snapshot of how people felt during this time. I will see you next time. We'll chat again real soon. And keep journaling and keep growing.